Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Julia Konopka-Rujerczuk. I'm Deputy Director of the National Library. On behalf of mine, but also PhD Tomasz Makowski, who unfortunately couldn't make it, I'd like to welcome you today here at our venue at the National Library. We are so happy that the conference We Will the World, um, Eye on the World, is hosted right here, and we are also happy that we can host a festival. Moe Koneser, I wish you fruitful discussions, fruitful workshops. Once again, hello, ladies and gentlemen. And I am Magda Kospodsiadło on behalf of the organizer of the conference uh, that is Publishing House Vytwórnia. I'd like to welcome you here. It's the very first day of the conference devoted to um, children's books, Małe Koneser, Little Koneser. And today we have a special day for professionals. And I'm so happy that so many of you have made it with us. We have librarians, people working at schools, publishers, as well as those of you um, that promote readership. This is what we all have in common, books for children and teenagers. And that will be the main topic of our conversation today. However, this project wouldn't be possible without our partners. That is, individuals, thanks to whom we have been able to make it. It's because of the trust of the National Library, the City Hall of Warsaw, but also the publishing houses that you're going to uh, meet today. It's because of them that we can uh, meet here. It's Tatarak, Vitnokrong, and our dear international guests from Italy, Topi Bitori, and Memo from France, and Baobab from Czechia. This event is part of a European cooperation project that is happening also in France, France, Italy, the Czech Republic, and today in Warsaw. The name of the project is Eye on the World, and the coordinator of the project is Lise Martin. In just a moment, she's going to share with you what events have already taken place, what the whole project is about, so that you get a broader picture. I do hope that after several hours spent here at the National Library, you will feel inspired. You will be enriched with new knowledge on books for children. You will know more about us so that we all will be enriched in the end, also including new contacts, new ideas, what else we could do in the future. So I'm officially opening the conference. And Lise Martel, please join me at the stage. And in the meantime, some housekeeping. Uh, you have access to headsets so that you can listen to translation. Channel one, this is where you can listen to the Polish language. Channel two is English. The discussions will be held in English. So just to be safe, don't put the devices into the pocket because there is some infrared technology involved. So I'm Liz Martin. I'm the coordinator of the, this big project, uh, The Eyes of the World. And I will introduce it uh, with some slides uh, to explain uh, what is it about. Um, maybe I will sit. So as Magda says, uh, it's a, a European project made with four partners, which are there, and will present uh, a discussion after me. Um, so it's uh, in France, uh, L'Oeil du Monde, with uh, the French publisher Memo, in, um, in Poland, Vidvornia, with Okonas Viat, in Italy, Locchio del Mondo, with uh, Topi Pitori, and in Czech Republic, Oko dos Veta, with Baobab. So the um, The project is supported by the European, European program Europe Creative, uh, which part is uh, of uh, European Commission. 
and uh, it started uh, like one year ago in France and will end uh, at the end of this year in 2024. But we hope that it will last forever for children and for professionals as you are, librarians and publishers. Um, so it's uh, maybe sometimes difficult to sum up this big project, but we created a, a baseline uh, with a um, simple world to, to explain what is it about. It's about uh, childhood um, books, of course, and uh, also libraries, because we consider that uh, libraries are places uh, where the access to culture is um, is free, is uh, very important. So we we want through this project to focus on library and to uh, stress these beautiful places of uh, culture and books, and to create this um, mix of culture with a publisher from another land, stranger publisher for the library that adopt uh, the partners. So yeah, it's kind of a recipe that can be reproduced all over the world. So the first step of the project was, uh, uh, it um, comes to the mind of Christine Moreau, uh, the publisher of Memo. She imagined um, the, the project with uh, his friend publisher, her friend publishers from all the, over the world, like 40 continents represented. It's 12 publishing houses uh, of uh, youth literature. And um, they, um, they, are, they are linked uh, and uh, have strong relation between them uh, through the Bologna Book Fair in Italy, the most, uh, yeah, the, the most important uh, fair of uh, children books in the world. And each year, Christine, uh, met the, their friends, and uh, it came to his mind to to link them with libraries. So they are, as I said, um, uh, children literature um, from Europe, from Spain, uh, from Rwanda, Bakame, Baobab in Czech Republic. And they, uh, they are linked with uh, some shared values, like uh, to be independent, they, they don't belong to a franchise. They are a small company uh, with two or three people work in, and they, um, they made own creation with beautiful books. That's our opinion. <laughs> and um, I'm so sorry because I forgot memo between MagiCon and One Stroke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Christine will tell all uh, about memo after. So yes, it's 12 beautiful publishers uh, gathered around uh, this project. And uh, last one, Bitvornia, of course, and Top Editorial. So that's the first step to to create a network all over the world through books. And after, we of course want to involve libraries. So each partners um, gathered libraries from uh, here in Warsaw, in Tabor, in Bologna, and in Nantes in France to uh, adopt publishers. So the first step was to connect with this publisher to know their catalog and know their books. So they bought like uh, 50 books, each libraries, or a network libraries in the city. And they also, there is, I think, 
but um, 70 libraries involved through these four countries. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a lot of librarians and libraries to discover those books. Uh, some are orgi original, they are not translated yet, so it was uh, unique to discover some books uh, of foreign countries. And uh, after uh, this, uh, this uh, development of collection, uh, they made uh, plenty of action, of mediation, of cultural action, like uh, workshops. You can see uh, some pictures of uh, Czech Republic, of France here in the middle, and uh, in Warsaw here. With um, to stress some books, to stress an artist, to stress um, uh, a tool, an artistic tool, and of course to stress uh, uh, foreign culture, um, like uh, Sweden there. And uh, they made plenty of workshops and discovering for children, it was a way to discover a language also. Uh, through readings. Here it's a festival in France, so it came, it was uh, settled last year in April and March. And uh, we made exhibition. Uh, you can see a small cabin to listen to uh, original uh, stories in their own language. And uh, yeah, plenty of readings for for young uh, child. It was workshop uh, for like six, eight years old. So it was a way to to discover culture and to 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 have practical um, access to this artistic uh, universe. Um, and the third step of, uh, of this uh, project is uh, the cooperation between publishers, of course, and librarians through workshop. Uh, here in, in Warsaw, there was a, a workshop uh, just for librarians and also in uh, Italy, you can see there. Um, it's very important uh, to First, uh, involve librarians through a formation, through to, to emphasize knowledge and uh, skills uh, with uh, the choose uh, to choose books to understand uh, what is the language of the illustrator. So it was a, a good start, and uh, it last. Uh, it will be. Uh, also a tool to reproduce some workshop uh, as uh, Maya Bongrand here in uh, Italy. As the librarians are now trained, they can do workshop by their own for children and for their public in libraries. So, and here we are uh, through meetings and professional day to discover each other, publishers, and a way to function uh, with libraries. Um, so, yes, uh, it was the, the three steps of this, of this project. And we hope that in last year, maybe, it will be another project, maybe in Rwanda or in uh, South Korea. They are interested to, to, to have their own version of uh, L'Oeil du Monde. And uh, we hope that uh, links are settled between those professionals of books. And that, of course, children, we are know that more than um, 10,000 children um, affected by this project through the four European countries. So we hope that it will rest it will stay in their own development, on culture, and uh, on. Uh, it's of course to to insist about uh, the importance of uh, of uh, literature for children and for 
encourage readings among this public. And I didn't say maybe uh, you notice that uh, little f character through this project is uh, from Kitty Crotter, the Belgium illustrator, which is our godmother. Uh, so we are very proud of this. And um, uh, yes, we hope that uh, maybe it will give you ideas to, to settle mediation action through this project and that you, you'll be interested in. Thank you for your attention and I will let uh, Christine, Paolo, Magda and Teresa come for a discussion. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again uh, to the conference Eye on the World. And I am uh, very happy that uh, I can welcome here the representatives of four independent uh, publishing houses who make uh, the pillars of this uh, project. And let me introduce those uh, persons first. I will read it to make sure I do not miss any detail. Uh, friends, represented by uh, Christine Moreau. And uh, she is the author of uh, the uh, project uh, L'Oeil du Monde, but also the founder of the MIMO publishing house. And since 1993, she has been publishing high-quality titles for young readers and or uh, art lovers, including uh, in new editions of uh, famous uh, picture books uh, and uh, the uh, first uh, edition of the project Eye on the World uh, took place uh, in March 2023. Uh, then uh, we have um, Paolo Canton from uh, Topi Pitoridi uh, publishing house. Uh, um, which specializes in uh, books, uh, illustrated books for children. Uh, currently, it has around 350 titles in its catalog. Czech Republic, uh, represented by Teresa Horvatova, who is the editor, um, publisher, translator, and writer. She co-founded the Baobab Publishing House, specializing in books for children. In 2011, she initiated and organized the first edition of Tabuk Festival, international event for small independent independent uh, publishers. We also have the Polish filler of the project, Magdalena Kłospodsiadło, editor, publisher, co-founder of uh, uh, Vytwórnia Publishing House and uh, co-organizer of the conference and the Mały Koneser, Small Koneser Festival, which takes place tomorrow and after tomorrow. Um, Vytwórnia was uh, nominated two times for international um, award uh, of publishers in international first in Bologna. And, uh, but I think that other guests also are familiar with this distinction. So we are in good hands when it comes to uh, children uh, literature. We decided on. Um, and uh, I am very curious because we have this international uh, group here. And I would love to ask you about your local markets. Uh, what are your audiences? What are the differences between uh, the countries that you, that you work from? Can we uh, can start with you, Teresa? <laughs> local and audience so uh, yes we are from Tabor it's a little city like 20 times uh, more little than Warsaw maybe uh, and uh, so it's very local <laughs> it's very local uh, and from the beginning because we moved from from Prague uh, we tried to to work with people uh, to maybe to connect like our audience from Prague and big cities and region. And it's maybe special, uh, a bit special, because, you know, first we, we moved to a little town, Bechinie, which is not far away from Tabor. And uh, first thing we did was a little festival, because we thought that it would be good to show our work to no, to our normal audience, but also to people who are living with us in Bechinie. And it was the beginning of all our festivals we do, because we are also organizer of big festival Tabuk, which now uh, it's a festival of uh, small independent publishers. Uh, 
which we had like 10 times, then two, two years we stopped. But now, uh, because of Eudemund, uh, because of uh, we restart. So that's it. Uh, connect is our public is uh, from both part uh, from both parts. You know, so we try to uh, to work with them um, with them uh, personally by festivals, by meetings, uh, by sp by speeches, by by us. And you, Christina. Thank you. I don't really, I mean, I mean, we are a local little publisher. As very often I say, we are just like goat cheese um, producers. <laughs> and we try to keep this craftsmanship, small size of the team, and also to try to not to follow what everybody does now, Nowadays, it's to produce more and more and more. And one day, you just find out that you are producing something that is not at all what you had dreamed of. So this is maybe what links us. And this is what I wanted to do with this project, is to have people know that they can choose between the small producer of carrots or the big international company using pesticides and poisons. And I think maybe bad books for children are like a poison for their brains because it's always with the same cliche and um, poor, very poor imagination in texts and images. But there are many small publishers and many small producers. So I wanted libraries to know that they could rely on these people. And this, this is how I understand local when you asked if we had something local. Well, it's a local, a world local company. It's the company of people believing in intelligence and art for children being a big part of their lives. And you are all here together today to witness this, uh, this, this idea. I know that's what you do every day with children. So that's local, but it's global. That's a beautiful thought. And uh, Paolo? Uh, okay. I won't say there's anything local in Topi Pittori. We started 20 years and six weeks ago, this publishing company. <laughs> and um, from the very beginning, we knew that we would be able to survive only if uh, the dimension of the market was international. Uh, so we started producing books, making books, creating books with the idea of having a worldwide market which we could not reach by ourselves but we had to uh, work together with other publishers uh, selling the rights or selling the books or sharing ideas uh, and we also are not catering on the creation market only in Italy. I think we work directly with uh, artists, authors or illustrators from a dozen of countries in the world, from Bulgaria to Japan. And uh, I think the reason of this is uh, that uh, we do share a common language and the language is picture book. Uh, and it's a language that grows uh, and well grows from a soil which is our own different languages but then the orthography and the grammar for this language are common and this is what allows us to have something like well with Christine 
pushing the thing, having something like this going all over the world, all over Europe and in, future, in the future all over the world, because we do speak the same language, even though our idioms are not the same. Uh, the second thing which I think is very important about our publishing company, uh, and again, not exactly local, but more national, is that we, when we started, there was no market for picture books in Italy. I think it's more or less the same situation that there's in Poland right now, or maybe five years ago. Uh, just a few small independent publishers doing some beautiful books, but no market. And in order to develop that, we had to talk to adults, because you have to realize that between the book and the children, there's always some, there are always adults in between doing the mediation uh, between the children and the books. And that's why we started to talk a lot, or write a lot, um, to everybody who was in between, like librarians, booksellers, parents, uh, and people doing uh, reading promotion. Uh, and that's the very important part, because you don't need to teach this language of picture books to children, because they knew it by instinct. They know it by instinct. They don't need anybody to explain anything. We just have, we adults, to understand that language and learn how to use it uh, to be on the same playing field as children we are supposed to give the books to. I think I understood your question um, a bit differently when it comes to the uh, local character because uh, we have uh, certain things in common like independence size of uh, our companies and certain uh, publishing philosophy to treat uh, our um, audience as partners but each of us functions in a completely different country with um, different uh, economic um, environment i will refer to what paolo said we also had a similar situation around 20 years ago that our market for children's books were very, was very poor and uh, of uh, a bad quality. And suddenly, a small publishers became um, popular, creating literature for children, and they wanted to change it. They knew that in the 60s and 70s, the market was completely different, and the real artists were creating books for children. Um, 20 years ago, we were not, uh, we didn't even know that we were actually issuing uh, picture books. And this phenomenon, the definition appeared later, and we are still actually discussing how to call those books in Polish. But we wanted to create books which were better. And at that time, uh, me, myself, and uh, the publishers here, um, they are uh, the role models. When I look at their catalogs, I am really impressed, and I'm always surprised how it is possible that uh, they are able to function for so many years, sell those books. Maybe part of you, uh, those books are um, presented in the hall. This is uh, just a uh, a small fraction of what we could bring here. Uh, most of them will be available at the Connoisseur Festival tomorrow. But this seems to be still an unattainable goal for me. I am trying to uh, issue, and uh, I think that uh, we are determined for those uh, books to be refined, sophisticated, and ambitious, but at the same time, um, for everyone, but this is still difficult. We are uh, also in a, an interesting situation. We discuss a lot about the book market, about the system, about a fixed price, and uh, the need for a regulation about books, uh, the protection of a book, because it's a, a cultural good. It's not a product like every other, but maybe I'm talking about too many topics at the same time. 
I only want to say that uh, we, as Vitvornia Publisher, Publishing House and other publishers here, we hope that we will have uh, such conditions that will allow us to uh, be like uh, those uh, other uh, publishers that we have uh, here. And I hope that you will also reveal us some secrets. How do you make it to be so successful? And uh, I really hope for that in this discussion inspired me to, to go deeper into, into conversation with you ladies um, because uh, there's this question of being local, this uh, craftsman, uh, but also to try to go global, try to open yourself up to other, uh, other markets, for example uh, through uh, Bologna Fair. Uh, so you are trying to, to connect maybe with, with other publishers to create some, some net and this may help you uh, grow up and survive. We um, we founded ba uh, Baobab uh, not in 2011 but in 2000, and so it's been 25 years almost, or it was 1999. And when we when we started, we just did three books by year, you know, and we even didn't know what we do. I think we just wanted to give work to our friends who were artists and. Um, uh, who couldn't find work in, uh, in this time because uh, with all those changes which you know from Poland, it was uh, horrible because big houses produced just uh, shit, <laughs> you know. So uh, we did it just for fun, for our children, for us and uh, uh, there is no uh, any recipe than to do like uh, books which are good and uh, work with people which you trust, you know. And uh, um, so first, when we came to Bologna, uh, I came there. It's I incredibly big, you know. You uh, you go inside and you see all those holes. Like how how many holes is there? Five holes with thousands and thousands of editors and also very much of shit. <laughs> and you, you see it and uh, you are asking yourself what I'm doing there, here, yeah, because I'm little editor uh, who is working with little authors from a little, little country, you know, and you are there and you say, "Oh no, what I will be, uh, wh what I will do there," you know. And suddenly, uh, in one year, two years, uh, you see that uh, the world of good editors is very small. It's like village, you know. You meet each other in Bologna. Uh, you say hello, and you know that it's your world, you know, because. It's what what it's between us that we uh, we work with good authors. We try to be um, we try to be open to many possibilities. How to do books? How to how to create books? How to um, um, how to speak by books to uh, by books to uh, to children? You know, so. Um, um, this open mind is the the most important, I think. And um, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> I can remember the first time that I went to Bologna. Some friend of mine, Olivier Douzou, who is also a famous uh, writer and illustrator, said, "So let's imagine that." Children publishing is just like one big swimming pool. And then you have friends in a bucket. And then you have the, big, the bigger companies in, 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 in France and they have a small bucket. And we are only not even a drop. We are just like steam, you know. And that's what I really felt when I went there also first time. Because it's a business like another. You see these business people, you know, very serious in tie and, 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 and suits. And sometimes you think, what are these people 
caring about children publishing. They could be in, uh, I don't know, selling uh, maybe uh, harvesting machines or something like that. And then you, just as she said, we meet, well, well we stroll around with, you know, Walt Disney uh, and every kind of, because the world of children publishing is what you call, um, uh, you know, it's these big, big, big characters that are bought by many countries and many publishers to make, I don't know, small bags and, 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 and everything for children that is not a book. So you stroll around and then you meet these books and you meet the people. And for years, we've been doing that. And I was saying to the director of Bologna Fair that she could also invent a new, a new concept that was born in Bologna. Because I told her that many of um, these good things we are doing now and uh, this project is born in Bologna. It's been raised in not my city also after, but it's born in Bologna. So what I mean is that even in a globalized world, we have been able to find our brothers and sisters. Like when I see her, when I see her, when I see him, I'm so happy because it's not only friends, it's also, should I dare to say it in Poland, comrades, you know. <laughs> and these comrades, we have been uh, also publishing words, uh, uh, books together, selling. I'm like, I'm going to publish several books by, by, by Baobab. And uh, we've been working together for a long time. And this is the aim of these small houses. It's to last. And it's not the less difficult thing to do because create a publishing company is very easy. To last is not very easy. That's the point. <laughs> and I would love to point out and remind Christine, that I usually wear a suit and a necktie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless, but he's, nonetheless, I'm he's, not. He's I'm, I'm our not. Italian aristocrat, and we like him like that. <laughs> the the. When I was very young, I used to work for an art book publisher, which was famous all over the world because of these very expensive books. And the first time I went with him in Frankfurt, which is the first book fair in the world, founded in 1484, so m less than 30 years after the printing was invented, and was international already there because we have documents of books leaving from Venice, which was the main printing center, to Frankfurt every year. And it's huge. I mean, Bologna is big, Frankfurt is three times bigger. And it was the last day and everybody was, un was unpacking uh, packing things up and everything started to look empty. And he told me, can you imagine next week this place will be full of shoes? <laughs> and that was illuminating for me because we are not doing something a lot different than making shoes or making wine. Uh, well, wine is a better example. <laughs> <laughs> Depending because on the it shoes. has an action on the mind. <laughs> and the idea is, we are not on the market. Uh, I don't know in Poland if wine is, more, is common or not, if you drink more beer or wine, but in general, in Italy, which is a wine country, or in France, the, most, the, the best sellers of wines are in the Tetra Pak thing, and you pay, let's say, two euros for one liter. And it's not doing you very good. <laughs> uh, and you have all sorts of qualities, etc. But if you do what French people call the grand vin, the great wines, you devote your life to details and to all sorts of studies and marketing. And, and you know that you're going to sell. There's not, there are not enough French people to buy your Bordeaux or not enough 
uh, Italian people to buy your Amarone. And you have to go all over the world trying to sell your wine. And you're doing a completely different thing from those who do the cardboard box wine. Uh, and, uh, but there's a big difference which makes book very special uh, in comparison with, with any other pro, uh, product. That is, the books Christine does, which are the best in the world, the book Teresa does, which are second best in the world, <laughs> the book Magda does, which are third best in the world. Uh, I'm... <laughs> okay. Uh, they do not cost more to buy than the cardboard box uh, wines, the, 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 the standard uh, mass market Walt Disney things. Uh, and that's a privilege we, and a burden at the same time for us who do the books, because it's not less expensive producing those. Uh, we have different costs, a different cost structure. We don't have to uh, spend a lot of money in marketing, advertising, etc. But uh, we are able to offer the best for the same price, or maybe a little more, than uh, the, let's say, mass-marketed products from uh, American multinationals. And I think this is part of what makes our work very interesting and rather difficult. <laughs> there are two questions here, because uh, first one is like, how um, we all know in which situations do we drink wine. We need that, we want this, uh, this social situations, for example. But how to create the need to, to read these books, to, to have time for that, to have attention for that. And second, uh, I'm not sure if in Poland or in, with, uh, in the case of Baobab, is the same, uh, the same uh, with the price. This, this is not the price of the uh, cheapest wine, maybe it's more expensive and how to work with that. Maybe Magda, you can uh, say something about it. Let me get back to Bologna for just a second before I answer your questions, okay? I actually recommend everyone to go to the Bologna Fair at least once in your life to get immersed in that swimming pool that Christine mentioned. After all, you can meet them people from across the whole world to see the books, to meet the publishers from all over the world. So this is where you mostly purchase actually rights to translation, for example. It's different in Poland where people really go there to buy books. Let me say one thing. I believe in the year 2005 or 6, I went to the Bologna Fair for the first time. And we had just a little shelf on a Polish stand with three books, maybe four, but no more. Two of them were Janusz Stanny, uh, this is a Polish title, and it was incredible. We were so lucky that Christine Moreau from Memo actually saw these books and she instantly purchased the rights to these books. And then they were published in French by Memo. So to me, this was just incredible. I had no idea back then how one does this internationally. I had no idea how one purchases rights and so on and so forth. So I was so lucky to have met her there. And I'm so happy that we had these books with us and we thought, hmm, let's check whether these books could be interesting to international audiences. Because indeed, even though we are small publishers, we are looking for similar partners across the world and it's really quite successful you probably realize that Polish children's books, especially picture books, are translated into many languages across the world. And there are many successful publishing houses that do it. So this is a great exports product of Poland, I would say. So we should be aware of that. Talking about culture, sometimes people ignore this fact. And we really are very successful Polish. Uh, it's the Polish publishers that 
we own this success too. So we are doing much better with books than with wine, don't we? Yes, that's true. I actually forgot your question now. You asked about the price, right? Yes, I said that actually in our country it's different because these prices are quite higher compared to mass products. Well, the situation in Poland is a bit absurd. For many years now, I think it's due to distributors, but we must have given our permission. That is, cheap books are the, pri uh, are the king. And so books should be cheap, and only later do, one, do people look at other characteristics. That's so sad. And yesterday, we went to Bullerben bookstore. It's a little brick and mortar bookstore uh, led by Mr. Grzegorz, who always has the best books published in Poland. And we concluded both that it's just absurd that a book for children with a certain price on the cover on the day of debut can be cheaper by 40% if you buy it online. So really, the situation is hard to understand right now. People don't think about the fact that actually this book is like the worth of two coffees at a cafe, right? Hopefully, it will change one day. Some people have different views on that. I believe we need to do a lot of lobbying work by some wise people who will be able to sort it out better, to sort it out the book market in Poland from scratch. Hopefully, the new Ministry of Culture, Education, and Finances will create favorable conditions. Uh, we have the, the same situation in Czech Republic. Um, it changed a bit because now we have zero watt for books. But what it, does it mean? I mean, is it really good for us? I'm not sure because, you know, zero watt, it's for whole, uh, everybody from whole, whole publishers from Czech Republic, so also for big publishers who are producers of many books which you which are in the market you know six months like you know it's like bread or or something you know so they produce then they sell and then they put it uh, to levne knihe what's the term like um, to to those shops uh, where you can uh, buy it for nothing you know so and but I don't know if it will really help us, you know. I, th I think that the problem is that we have not fixed uh, price for, uh, like, publishers, and it would be great. And we try to, we try to do something with this, uh, but it's, it's very hard. But because, you know, uh, in our countries, uh, capitalism it's, it's, is something saint, you know. So... Um, so uh, to do something against those big companies, it's against capitalism, and capitalism is still, you know, the first one, the first thing in the, in the post-communist countries. I think that's a problem. Yeah, that's a very important point because we have a fixed price in France, and it's very important for bookshops, for instance, and we have a good big amount of small independent bookshops in France. But the problems remain the same because what happens is that there is a um, very important uh, amount of young illustrators because we haven't spoken about illustrators and authors so far and they don't live with what they do because even if they have two, three, four, five publishers. They do two, three, four, five books a year. These books uh, are produced by publishing companies. They are in the bookshops, and two months after, or three months after, the book is not there anymore. Either it has been sold, which is the best solution, but 
most of the time, it's like a big flush, you know, in the toilet. It keeps on producing water and keeps on flushing water. And we have been doing something very, very difficult since the beginning. Uh, something our banker says we shouldn't do is that we don't throw the books. We Even the books that come back from the bookshops with a little uh, thing, almost nothing, but cannot be commercialized anymore. We give it to associations, we give it to schools, we give it to all kinds of different projects. Even an international project called Biblionef, who sends our books all over the world. But all this has a cost, because um, it's very, very risky for a company to stock, to have stocks, huge stocks. We have huge stocks. It's not good. And it's expensive also <laughs> to to pay people to keep these stocks. Sorry, Christine. Do you do you pay VAT from from the stock? Because we we have to pay uh, VAT by, uh, for 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 books w that we have in the stock. Of course, we every pay for yeah these yeah books. every year. Yeah. So it's expensive. Of course, it's very expensive. <laughs> it's much wiser and more intelligent for companies to keep on throwing and taking new books and throwing them and keep on taking new books. But it has a very bad effect on uh, the illustrators and authors because after a few years, this book doesn't exist anymore. Even somebody very important uh, in, in, in an artistry of book told me once, uh, it's Beatrice Alemania, you know, Christine, I have half of my books that are dead because no other publisher will take them again because ha it has been sold already. They, are, they think that it's not worth doing it. So this is why librarians, all professionals of children publishing are so important. I don't say it because you are here. I keep on saying it for 30 years that only you can do the difference and say, okay, this is a ready to throw out book. We are choosing these books by small publishers. Well, you have very good books also by big publishers. It happens, <laughs> but they have this eye and this will to choose, because um, then maybe we can keep on doing this very uncomfortable sport of keeping books for years and years <coughs> and selling 10 copies a year, which is uh, what happens for some of our stocks. <laughs> so um, this is the same situation for uh, countries where you have a fixed price and countries where you don't have a fixed price. It's even worse when you don't have a fixed price. But internet has made this very, uh, this, uh, um, this uh, thing to happen that even in our country, you publish a book and on Rakuten or Momox, which are platforms, next day, as she said, you have it 20 or 30 percent lower, saying that it, it saves the planet because it's second-hand books. But it saves the planet, but it doesn't save creation, and, and, and it doesn't save the very people that make these vegetables and fruits. Because if you say, okay, we are going to, 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 to buy it second-hand, so that it doesn't spoil paper and uh, everything, well, you kill also the creators of this because they have almost nothing on these cells. It's the same thing for music, same thing for many things. There are always people to tell you, no, it's so we can share with more people. But the reason is to make more money. This is the only reason. So I think uh, up till now we have let's say, talk to each other and let you hear. Uh, but I think, I think 
most of you are librarians. Maybe there are some booksellers and maybe there are some book creators. And I think if we start to talk to you now, we have to figure out <coughs> what, not what you can do for us, but what we can do for you. And uh, I think the situation that Magda depicted of the Polish uh, book market is very interesting because she said the most important thing is that the book costs nothing. Mm, if it's one euro, it's better than two euros. Oh, you have different currency. So if it's 10 slotty, it's better than 20. Um, even though even 20 is a very small price. Uh, but we have to figure out and we have to make other people understand uh, that there's a difference between a book as a consumption item, so the one you read and then throw away, and the book as an investment good. English language is, in this circumstance, very uh, clever because it uses the word good, uh, which is both to mean merchandise, uh, items to be sold, but also something which is good. Uh, so is this an investment good and how can we help you understand which are the investment goods where is important to put your money I say your money because as librarians you also do buy millions of books every year and you spend money which is not your own money but it's public money it's everybody's money so I think uh, that uh, you should ask us publishers especially the one among us who are more interested in this development of the book as an investment item an investment good, uh, what can we do to help you let the people know and be aware of this difference? Uh, I think there will be time to discuss this later on, but I think you should uh, ask every day one publisher, tell me uh, why you're doing this. Uh, why is it that expensive? Can we make it less expensive? Uh, in a way, in, in Italy, for our company, there's a paradoxical thing. Uh, we have two collections, two main collections of books. One has the trademark Topi Pittori, and the other one has the trademark Mini Topi, so small uh, books, which are exactly the same as the big books, but smaller. Uh, and they cost more or less half the price and we um, have a, I mean, selling those low price books is a pain. Nobody wants them. Because they think, after 20 years, they think it's not worth the investment. It's better to keep the bigger one, which you can share easily is with, with your uh, children, uh, with your pupils, with your customers, as we can call the uh, people who come to the library, uh, than uh, buying the small one, which is half the price. Uh, because it's smaller, it's something. And I think we have, we, I don't mean just our publishing company, but a group of publishers from Italy, all, all of them born between 1999 and 2004, worked a lot in communicating, in explaining to librarians, booksellers, creators, parents, where the difference is. And this is the most effective, effective thing you can do to help publishers. With the help of publishers, helping you understand where the difference is, what's the grammar of those books, and how you can make better choices with the public money you're spending every year. Magda, you want to add something? Znaczy, w, 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 
well, in Poland, we need to remember about the inflation rate. Books and other goods are ever more expensive. The same goes for production prices of books. This is what we've been all struggling with. However, in libraries, uh, books are for free. And so people have a growing awareness of this. And you're right that it's important to talk to libraries so that they can take informed decisions. And in the past, I thought as a publisher that I was just creating something beautiful, something which is art, pure art of um, illustration and literature. Today, however, I need to think a bit different because this is about satisfying my own needs, but I need to think in terms of the benefits for the readers. So it's about me. I need to stop thinking um, just driven by my own needs. I need to think about the readers. I need to think what these beautiful books published by me could give to the adults who mediate, who read out to children. And I think this is what, during this conference and also other initiatives, this is what we've been trying to communicate to the world, including to libraries, that this is something important. Uh, the needs of, uh, of readers. Okay. Oh, no, no, no problem. How do you see the needs of your readers and how do you address them? And maybe we can go back to my previous question about the, um, encouraging people to create a uh, um, attention span for the books. And, and I'm thinking that maybe we never, we nev never thought very much about needs of our readers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank I'm you for sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we wanted to, uh, maybe we want just wanted to be sincere. Is it the uh, good word? And so uh, sincerity is something uh, which is very important for, for me, you know, uh, in, um, in creation of books. Uh, and I, uh, I think that if uh, you have an artist and he is sincere, inside and he, he does the book, he creates the book sincer sincerely, <laughs> you understand me, um, that the book is usually good then, you know. You have to choose the artist, you have to know with who you work, but uh, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't want to make books uh, for to um, for to be beloved by uh, by lectors or or I don't know I, I I feel that it's also art it's I I want maybe to be um, uh, to be close to children to to uh, to collaborate with children and I try as editor as editor uh, to find the way how to be close to the young reader how to uh, talk with, with, with him and um, how to open him uh, my word or the word of my artist. And that's important. That's maybe also a role of editor because sometimes, you know, you work with artists you, you like very much, but uh, uh, to translate uh, his word, it's sometimes difficult. But I mean, I, I, I don't care if um, uh, in the beginning of our career, uh, many people said, oh, those books are bizarre. They are not for children, you know. And um, I was, uh, I thought that they were for children, you know. And uh, maybe the translation is the word that you you have to translate what you want uh, and what you feel, you know, but not, uh, not to change uh, your mind. <coughs> you know what, what I'm speaking about? Christina? Yes. Well, I think um, the very wrong thing to do is to think of the 
child as a customer. So you, you do this and these colors, not these colors, it's not for children. For instance, we heard a lot that black books in black were not for children. It's the opposite, they love it. And what does a great author of ch books for children is as follows. With its own soul, that is still a child soul, because we all have a child soul inside, he creates for children. And very often when these books are done like that, from their soul of children, it goes also, it, it, it's also loved by adults who still have their children's souls, but they don't know of it. And when they read the book, then something different happens. And this is what makes the difference between lousy authors and sincere and creative authors. The first authors create to meet the requirements of a market, and the real authors are creating beauty and sense and philosophy and a lot of concepts that are too wide to be mm, to be talked about now and they do it with a very simple idea that is um, universal and goes right to the heart and to the mind of the people who read it whatever the age from two to a hundred that's Maybe, kind of a definition. Sorry. So finally, after 20 years and six weeks, <laughs> there's something I'm not, I do not agree with you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh so just let's make a couple of steps <laughs> backward. Uh, all these things about art uh, and about emotions and feelings and sincerity and whatever is, if you allow me, bullshit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it will become important once we have done these two steps. We have done backward, forward. Uh, making a, bo a book, what is a book? It's a bunch of sheets of paper, uh, stuck together in some way with a cover, with written something inside and outside. Uh, but it's also a very delicate mechanism. It's like an engine. And it makes, I mean, our work as publishers and your work as mediators is to understand how this engine works. And if it works well, uh, Every time, I would suggest you an exercise, which is every time you open a book, try to imagine that the page is not 40 grams, so that you turn it like this, but it's 60 kilos. And you have to use both your hands to, uh, and is this effort of turning a 60 kilograms page worth, because, of the flow of the story? Is the book telling me an interesting story? Is it make, making me expect something new that is worth the effort of turning the page? And figure out, for example, a child who has no, how do you say, very strong digital in physical terms ability, and let's say two years old, and for him or her, the effort of turning a page, especially if it's not a board book, it's, uh, it's an effort. He has to, the fine, uh, sen say, uh, how do you say, sensitivities in the tip of the fingers to take the, and turn the page. Try to imagine if you would finish, you would arrive to the end of the book if you had to apply the same effort to the turning of a page. We are producing engines. We are producing mechanics, which is very complex because it's made by 
words, is made by pictures, is made by the support. I mean, the book itself, the quality of paper, the quality of printing, the colors we use, the type of binding, etc. Uh, so it's a very complex engine, and it has to work smoothly. I mean, it's the same like a car. You have to jump in, turn the key, and it goes. If you have to think about, I have to push this like the old timers, push this, press the other button, and <laughs> rummage with the uh, uh, gear shift, forget it. You just have to jump in, and everything is nice and smooth. But the question is, if you have ever seen in the Science Museum here in, in Warsaw or somewhere else, how beautiful a good engine, a very smoothly working engine is, then we have done these two steps forward. You understand what Christine and Teresa and Magda say when they talk about beauty. It's not something which is uh, part of the creativity of the people involved into producing books, into making books. I use the word producing because also the printers are very important in the, in the, in the production process, in the creation process. Um, but it's something which is intrinsic of the book as a collective work. If you take the best illustrator in the world and you just let him or her do that, you probably have a very bad book. There are some exceptions. <laughs> but the rule is that a book is a collective work. And beauty comes only by smoothly putting together all these things. So now we have done the two steps forward, then I agree with you. <laughs> I was going to say that your bullshit goes very well with my bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them are very well together. I agree with what you say. Just I think that there is this little touch of magic that is uh, the privilege of the creators. And this is beyond words because you don't know why. Just like say, Rémi Charlip said the same thing that you said, he said that each page you have to consider that it's a door. So you open, each time you open a new door. That's why very young children, like one month or two months old, are already looking at this incredible object that is books. Okay. Oh. I, I have to add something. There's, you probably are accustomed with uh, Bruno Munari, who was one of the best book creators ever. Uh, or at least in the 20th century. And he played very interesting small tricks, uh, like putting a cat in one of his books, which is in the night of, uh, in the black of the night, uh, there's on the, the right-hand corner of a, of a spread page, half a cat. And you turn the page and you have the, half, the other half. And it might seem impossible, but no adult ever realizes that, unless a child says, look at that. Because it's tiny, but it's there. And the quality of the sight of children on a book page has no comparison. Their ability of reading images uh, is far surpasses our ability of doing the same. And I would just like to add the way I currently think about uh, creating books um, is that we actually create experiences because a book is not only about turning pages, which is very important, but this is also the um, voice of the reader, the touch, is the situation where there is the reader, the listener, there is a conversation. What you want to 
uh, achieve, actually read it to me once again. So I think it's an element of a bigger puzzle. And this thing that we hold on our knees when we turn pages, it's an element of a, a bigger situation that we want to create where this young reader is a very important. And that's how I want to imagine it. I want this experience to be beautiful, to be remembered, to be important in life, because those illustrations that we see in our childhood, they, they are deep inside us. And we remember those uh, words, remember this voice. Uh, uh, when when we become adults, we remember the voice of our grandma who used to sing to us uh, the uh, fragments of the book. I remember the illustrations very well myself. So I want to think about it as an experience of reading the a pleasure of um, the listening and uh, the touching. So that's how I would uh, summarize it. Um, out of time, but I want to ask you um, about the libraries and your cooperation with them. Uh, in your in your uh, countries. So, we uh, started a few years ago a little project on a Baobab website. It was just after I think that it was just after uh, in uh, where we had we, where we had COVID times, you know. So we had time for it. And so we prepared uh, like field for uh, professionals to um, to come inside our books, uh, and uh, we proposed them like many uh, different uh, possibilities how to ask authors to come to uh, libraries, uh, so they can use um, list of. Um, Mm, mm, like courses like yeah they they can uh, see a list of courses like physics mathematics uh, uh, history etc and then they 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 can see also team list of themes and they can choose what they want uh, speak about children because we think that uh, the the most Im important is to teach children by books and that you can ch uh, teach children by books me i was a very bad student and uh, all my uh, childhood i i was just reading books and i th i think that all i know about the world i know from books and uh, i, I Somehow I passed because of books, because I read, not because I, I was a good student. And um, so I think that we can teach by books. And um, uh, there is active, there is um, a few people in Czech Republic uh, who are working uh, like this with books. Uh, uh, they call it like... Um, uh, thinking by books and they are going to schools they are choosing books and going to schools or to libraries and proposing like uh, courses uh, to uh, classes or also to teachers and uh, propose them how to to, to work with uh, with books but those people they choose our books but we didn't um, decide it they decide to choose our books. They choose many books from, or few books from, uh, from few editors, and they they uh, they do it. But so we did this project, and now, for example, for um, for this project, we um, it's very concrete things. Uh, we thought that the most important is to bring uh, books to those books, not only our books, but books by uh, edit, uh, other editors from uh, editors from the whole world uh, to regions, to little towns. So uh, for, for this project, uh, we have like eight 
uh, uh, eight twins, one from uh, foreign countries, outers, outers, like one from co foreign countries and one Czech, who are going together to a little town somewhere in the north, in the south, and uh, like we are doing whole year, we are do doing those little festivals. Uh, they bring their books, they bring their illustrations, but also uh, we go there with a bag, we will go there with a bag full of um, foreign books which were not never mm, traduced uh, to Czech and we will show them also to, uh, to people, to children, uh, to everybody who will be there. So, like, uh, 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 because, you know, in Warsaw, in Prague, in, uh, uh, we all know which books are good and which are not. But the problem is that uh, in little libraries, in a little region, it's, uh, they have not so much information. And uh, we really need to help them to orient themselves. So, just easy things like this. We have because it's 11 o'clock. I think it's uh, supposed to finish now. Is it? Five Almost five minutes. five minutes. So I, I think we have the same experience. We do the same kind of things. I'm not going to repeat. It's exactly the same kind of job. I just wanted, because it's going to, to end very quickly, to tell you one thing. Now, if you might, if you can, if you wish, buy books with foreign languages, any foreign languages. Even a foreign language you don't know. That's my experience. When I was a child, my grandmother was British. I had her child, child book. I didn't understand one word, so I invented thousands of different stories around these images. So please, buy books with foreign languages. And second, I wanted, please, to thank Magda, because in this project, Paolo and Magda and Teresa, they really took the project with them and I'm very, very, very grateful and I wanted to please to make a big applause. Yes, but where would we be without Christine who in... <laughs> when was that? I, I think that was in 2019, so five years ago, she approached me and said, I'm thinking about doing something big in Nantes and all over Europe and this and this and that. And I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then she kept on going and going and going to the European Commission, etc. But the question is, uh, again, how do we work with uh, libraries? In Italy, I think we have a privilege. We have now one, but in the past there were two magazines uh, uh, every two months or every three months published by libraries. Because, and that for us was very important because it was a way to understand what were the librarians' needs for us, reading those magazines. Uh, and we knew what was going on. And we were able to figure out uh, what the librarians would answer that very simple question I already posed here, which is, what can I do for you? Not what you can do for me. I know exactly what you can do for me, which is promoting the reading, which is making the book, the best books available. It does, it's not important that it is my books. Whenever a, someone stumbles into a good book, it's something good for me too, even if it's published by someone else. Uh, what can we do for you? And what we, what we could do in Italy was, uh, as I said, the picture book is a language in itself. Uh, but it's a, it's a language we don't know. Teresa said when we started, we didn't know what we were doing. And th I think we shared this experience. We all shared this experience. It was a trial and error process. Uh, we were trying to do something and we mostly saw mistakes. <laughs> But, uh, and having a contribution from librarians to create 
this language together is very important. Sharing the ideas we have about books, or books, or books in general, or other people books, which is, could be quite unpleasant, and, um, and having in return the experiences the librarians have. So if you, I don't know if in Poland does exist something like the magazines published by libraries. In Italy we had one from a library association and one from a trust or uh, financing a library not far from Florence. The library association magazine doesn't exist anymore, it's only online, but the other one still exists and is very good. Uh, and we did produce a lot of materials uh, in the uh, online and in paper by yourself uh, with other publishers to try to create this common language, shared language, uh, which we uh, at the end can share with the people who will use the book, not forgetting about the children, but the intellectual level things do happen among adults, so it's in between us, have a shared language to understand better what we are doing. Mm. We need to uh, finish soon, so let me just say that I hope it's just uh, the beginning of our um, activities. We talked many times about uh, common, shared things. So I think it's really important that we all do it together because each of us uh, um, is a small organization. But uh, when we are together, we are like those men in the suits. Uh, we are really big force. And what we do here also in Poland with other publishers, what uh, Mawe Koneser does tomorrow on the one roof, you are going to see 28 publishers. It's a small event, but there is a lot of force in it. So I really believe in those uh, events. And I hope that it will be um, beneficial for not only for us, but for all of you. And I'm very happy about it. I uh, would like to keep listening to our guests, uh, but we need to finish, unfortunately. So please give a round of applause to our guests.